Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is 10am in Australia or 1am in the UK. And if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2pm Pacific Time in the US, which is 7am in Australia or 10pm if you're in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well and it's good to see you guys so early into chat. Mr. Squarepeg, hello to you as well, Mr. Squarepeg. Smurfberry, always good to see you. And Galen, how are you guys? Good to see you in chat nice and early. So we were, we put the uh, <laughs> Temple of the Winds project temporarily on hold until maybe next week. We'll get back to finish that one. Uh, we're working on the House in the Hollow game. I'm just doing some optimizations in Unreal Engine version 4, version 4.22.3 to be exact. You're doing good, Mr. Squarepeg. Good to hear. Uh, so yes, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some work in uh, in in the Unreal Engine. We did that yesterday. We did, we did some optimization stuff. We're going to continue doing that today so I can get a build put together. Um, we were having some problems with the merge asset tool in Unreal yesterday. I did work out what the problem was and I will go through that soon. Uh, basically it's an error, it seems to be a problem with the way that the engine is doing its uh, unwrapping. My apologies if there's any noises today, they're doing some more external work to the building here, some renovation work on the outside of the building, actually in my stairwell which is near me so <laughs> any banging or anything, my apologies in advance. Of course they choose to start to do it right when I start streaming. Um, okay. So hopefully my music will drown it out anyway. So let's just pull up uh, the Unreal Engine. So this is the level we're working on, doing some optimization stuff. Uh, what do I want to do? Let's jump straight into it, I think. Now remember though, guys, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask me in chat. If you just want to pop in and say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. Alrighty, so uh, asset merge asset tool. Let's um, let let's let's use these books. Let's take a look at these books here. Okay, so if I select the books, we can see these books have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different textures. <laughs> so that's a lot of draw calls for a pile of books. Um, let me just find that in the asset browser here, which is this pile here. And I'm just going to pop outside and we'll put a pile of books out here on the uh, on the ground. Pull it up a bit. Okay, so we've got, we've got our little book pile here. Uh, let's do an asset merge on this. So if I open up the asset tool, basically the problem with the tool is right here and it defaults to turn this on. Generate light map UVs. Turning that on while it won't always affect the, the result, sometimes, as you guys saw yesterday, it really loses its mind. It sort of gets to the first shader and then loses its mind and doesn't keep going for the rest. If you turn that off, you won't have a problem. Now, I want new light maps to be generated, but there's a way around it. It's a two-step process. It makes it a little bit longer, but it's doable. So basically we turn off generate light map UVs inside of the asset tool and that way we won't get the problem of it losing its mind. <laughs> Sniper Echo, it's good to see you buddy. How are you? So yes, I'm just, just mentioning that, that that problem. So if you're going to be using the asset merge, as, merge actors asset, which you find under window developer tools merge actors, it is good to reduce your draw calls and optimize your, your texture maps and that sort of thing. And sometimes when you turn this on, it won't be a problem. But as you guys saw yesterday, I was having problems with this generate light map UVs being turned on and it defaults to being turned on. So just if you have a problem, turn it off. So we're going to use these, these books as an example because it has a lot of our different textures. It'll be a good test case for it. So I've turned generate light maps off. Now these books don't have a normal map. They don't have a roughness or anything like that. All they have is a texture. They're books. They're a small asset. Uh, 
You could normal map them if you wanted to. You could roughness and, and metallic map them as well. But to my mind, because the asset's so small in the level, it's like an incidental room filler thing. It's not a major sort of chair or table or wall. Or uh, I, They really don't need to be normal mapped. Uh, I didn't normal map the paintings and I also didn't normal map any of my plants with the exception of a couple. A couple of the big monsterias, I, 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 I normal map those, but most of the plants don't have a normal map as well. So just to save on texture memory for, for details that are so small that they're really not going to be noticed in a game. I don't, didn't normal map the books, I didn't normal map most of the interior plants, and I didn't normal map the paintings. Uh, Sniper says, I was doing some research today on that. It seems like the plugin gets around some of those problems. Not sure exactly how, though. You're talking about the plugin that's available on the marketplace, or are you talking about the blueprint? I'm assuming maybe you mean the uh, plugin that was, is on the Unreal Marketplace. Which is cool. Uh, my, my, my main concern, like I said yesterday, with the plugin is if I want to update the engine, is it going to break my assets? Because I know that the instance tool that you can also purchase from the marketplace has broken people's assets in the past until the dev has updated it. And um, yeah, I just don't want to be beholden to an external developer because I've got the guys working with me on this game and I can't be saying to them, well, I'm sorry, but we can't do any work on it for the next month until the developer updates the plugin. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sniper says, uh, yeah, on the marketplace, the blueprint doesn't touch the UVs at all. Okay. But hey, if, if, you, if you lock down your project to a version number and you don't update it, then it shouldn't be a problem if you do want to use the plugin or from the marketplace. Just putting that out there. Uh, I, I, I try and avoid doing that. If I'm planning on updating the engine, uh, I've always said to you guys, you should lock the version down. Once you start making a game and you're, you're pretty well into development, it's probably a good idea not to update the engine in case it breaks something, particularly if you're creating custom C++ code, because that can sometimes cause issues and an update. Assets, generally not. An asset usually won't cause a problem. I don't think it ever has for me. Sometimes blueprints will break sometimes. Uh, depending on how Epic Games cha make changes between updates. But C++, you can run into problems there. So you should always lock it down once you get so, so far into the, the, the development of your game. So yes, there are no normal maps, no metallic maps uh, or spec or uh, roughness. So I'm just going to turn on Merge Materials and I'm not going to select normal metallic or uh, roughness here because we don't have them. So we've got it. Specified LOD level, turned off that generate light map UVs, which causes the problem. We're going to reuse the mesh light map UVs, which I normally turned off yesterday as well, because I turned that one on. Uh, let's do a merge and let's see how it goes, shall we? So I'm going to just make sure, yes, merge. Tell it where we wanted to put it. I'm just going to rename this a little bit. And now it's going to start baking that out. So yes, uh, Sniper Echo, did, did you link publicly to that marketplace thing, Sniper? I can't remember. Or did you just send that to me, that link to me in the, uh, in Discord messaging? If you want to throw the link in, um, in chat, Sniper, go right ahead. The, the link to the plugin on the marketplace. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, I don't like relying on external plugins. Uh, I have automated the mesh creation process in Blender and the textures using the custom blueprint tool. The custom blueprint, uh, custom blueprint tool, uh, again, comes is, is made by Epic Games. It comes with the engine, so it's always probably a safer way to go. Now, that's why I'm using the asset tool here because, again, it, it's um, created by... By Epic Games, so if they update the engine, hopefully they'll make sure their asset tool is working as well. I'm pretty sure they will. And if they don't, people on the forums will tell them. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, that link is uh, in, in a tutorial channel on Discord. Excellent. Okay, so there you go, guys. If you want to know that the plugin we're talking about on the marketplace, you can jump on the Discord server uh, under the tutorials and tips section. Uh, Sniper Echo posted a link to it there. Smurpery says, uh, yeah, and then they'll ignore the people on the forums. <laughs> well, they don't. I'm pretty sure they don't. 
you might think they're ignoring you, but uh, it, it'd be a strange company that didn't pay attention to what the people on the forums were saying. And thank you, Sniper Echo. There is the Discord link right there if you haven't joined the Discord server. You should. There's a gallery section to show off your work. Um, there's a, a folio demo reels section where you can post links to your art station or your folio and all that sort of stuff. Uh, because only subs can post links in my Twitch chat. Do not, unless you're a sub, post a link in my Twitch chat. Do it on the Discord. I have Discord open as well as Twitch chat, so I, if you post in the Discord, I will see it. In fact, somebody, somebody's posted in the gallery. What's going on here? Smurfberry, you posted an image in the gallery of the plant you're working on. Very nice. I'll show you this in two secs. I'm just going to wait. <laughs> I'm not going to tempt fate and uh, mess with this. I just want this to finish up before I um, open up the browser. Because you never know. And in fact, I had to mess with uh, the engine this morning because it kept wanting to do that uh, DCC database thing where basically you can set the engine up. So if you're working with a whole lot of different people, you can set up a, like a network share where people that work on it can don't have to keep rebuilding assets and stuff. They can just share the one library of assets for the whatever they're working on. So I had to mess with that this morning. Which meant rebuilding all of my shaders <laughs> because I moved the cache, the DCC cache location. Uh, but it's basically so other people that work on, on the game with you don't have to rebuild the shaders themselves. They can just access this one central repository and uh, and and do it that way. So it's just a, a better way for people, many people that work on a, uh, an asset to share files. Okay, let's pull in this um, merged mesh. Now you see the merged mesh here looks fine. It didn't um, didn't lose its mind like it was yesterday with multiple materials or multiple shaders. I'm just going to bring it up near this one so we can do a comparison between the two uh, and then we'll have a look at um, how we're going for savings on memory if we saved anything or not let me just get it in line and over okay now if we if we look here it's very subtle but I can tell a slight difference on the spine of the book this one the original is a little clearer than this one so we have our spine there and we have our spine here and this one's just a little bit more not quite as high definition as this one here but considering these are small assets if we look at it from the top we're never really going to get that close to the books um, if I make an asset in the game where I want someone to pick the book up and look at it that will be a single book not a book pile and I'll make sure that texture resolution is high enough so that it's because it's going to be brought up to the camera and rotated that it looks good but for book piles like this which are never meant to be interacted with they're only there as a set dressing uh, people are never really going to get closer closer than like this to seeing them anyway uh, and as you can see as far as the quality goes we're not really losing enough that it's going to be noticeable I mean I can see a slight difference it's a slight like I said reduction in the quality of the texture most notable on the spine but really not enough that it's going to cause an issue people are not going to look at it and think oh yuck look at that horrible texture smurberry says set to unlit oh you want me to set it to unlit okay i can do that there we go so yeah set to unlit you can see the difference here between the quality on the spine here it's a little it's it's much um sharper than it is here uh, also just down here but like I said the closest we're ever probably going to get to the books is about here anyway inside of the game the book piles uh, and while there is a difference if we're making enough of a saving on the asset then that's a good thing but we'll check that in, in a minute it, it's pretty good I agree I mean considering like I said you see this is using two four six eight different textures to make up that book pile this one is using just the one and you can see what it does here with its texture atlas if I open it up you see the way it breaks the um, the different shaders into their own groupings now I'm a little um, curious as to why it uses so little of the UV space 
Seems to be a lot of wasted UV space to me, but that could just be the way that the engine wants to handle things, I'm not really sure. It's the result I'm more interested in anyway, than how it lays out its UVs, but... Um, and again, this could be down to the way I've laid my UVs out, although I, do, I don't lay my UVs out like that. It's just the way it's decided to pack them. But if you use that option, though, where you get it to regenerate the light map, it will actually generate new UVs, but it seems to be having a problem doing that. So we did it on some assets, but it was having a real problem with our others. Uh, the real Defiled Chaos, it's good to see you. Uh, says, hey, can I ask you, do you know how to change the pivot of a set of meshes combined together like blueprint for pressing end key to snap pivot at bottom of the mesh, not usual center? There is an override, I believe, isn't there in UE4, where you can temporarily override the, you can temporarily move the pivot point. It won't stay, but you can move, you can move your pivot point temporarily to get an alignment and then the pivot will move, will revert back to wherever it was when you are imported the model. There is that option. I haven't used it, but, uh, but it is an option there, but I'm not sure about talking about blueprints. You want to change the pivot of a set of meshes combined together like blueprint. So are you, are you talking about like you've created an actor using the blueprint? So you've got a bunch of meshes that you've You've gone to the blueprint, you've said selected, uh, convert selected component to a blueprint class. Is that what you're talking about? I'm just trying to work out what you mean by blueprint. Uh, but yeah, as I said, you can temporarily move the pivot point of a group of, of, a, of an asset or a group of assets, but it will revert back once you've, um, I'm not even, the, once the option is turned off. You can't save, uh, you can't move the, permanently move the pivot point inside the editor. You'd have to re-import, you know, if you're doing it with a group, you either have to merge the assets outside of the editor and re-import it with your pivot in the right spot. Uh, or like I said, use the temporarily move thing. Smokery says that does look strange, lack of UV coverage. I agree. Um, the best way, so we're using an automated tool here to do this. The best way to do this would be for me to take this back into Max and re-UV map it and then get it to, you, to use my UVs that way. You're always going to get a better result doing it that way. So I'd use Max's render to texture to actually combine them into one, which um, I might end up doing actually. Sniper says you can right click on a mesh and go to set pivot offset. That's that's it. <laughs> uh, Sniper said there's another way to do it. They'll check that now. Smurfery says my UE4 is closed right now because I'm giving all the system resources to baking. And the real default chaos says yeah, blueprint class and set pivot to floor of that mesh. Okay, it's always snaps to the center of that combined blueprint class. Mm. I actually don't think I've ever moved the pivot in a bl blueprint class, so I haven't actually um, messed with it. That one of the you still should I would have thought be, be able to, um, you know, I guess if it's a class and it's made up of a group, can you select the uh, the parent of the grouping and move the pivot to, of that, and then use that like you. You, you don't want to, you can't do it with multiple, I don't think, meshes inside of a blueprint. But there is an overriding uh, parent that all the other meshes sort of like are attached to, inherit from. Maybe you can move the, the pivot on the overriding parent temporarily to get the alignment correct. And then that should move all the others as well. Smurfbury says, are you wanting to set the pivot on an instance in the world or for the blueprint itself so that all of them will be the same? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, I'm just going to check this out. The image you posted, Smurfbury, of the plant you are working on. Uh, anyone new to my channel, you can go to phildoes3d.com and you can read up on me there. There's links to my social media and all that sort of stuff. Nice, very nice. Yes, that looks great. 
Of course, this is not the, not the textured up version yet, so... Smurpery uh, is obviously baking stuff out. But it's coming along very nicely. I love the design of this plant, it's really cool. And Smurpery is using Marmoset. Very nice. Um, so yeah, the other, the, the best way for me to do this would be to actually uh, do it inside of Max. And my phone is going off in the background, my apologies. I've got workmen working out there, I've got my phone going off. <laughs> oh dear. So Real Default Chaos, um, S. Smurpery says, are you wanting to set the pivot on an instance in the world or for the blueprint itself? I'm assuming it's that he actually wants to... I think what he's done is he's selected a bunch of uh, assets and he's converted those to a blueprint class. And I think he wants to set the pivot on the on this class so that he can place it in the world. I think that's what uh, what he's asking. And as Sniper Echo said, there is a you can temporarily move the pivot, and maybe you can move the pivot on the uh, on the parent object because all the others are inherited from that anyway, just to get your alignment because that pivot won't stick there. It'll, it'll. Uh, Sniper Echo says middle mouse and Alt to drag and now pivot location. Right click, set pivot, offset here. Yep. Uh, the real file case says, say for instance, a set of rocks grouped into a blueprint class, but to use the end key and have the pivot align them to the floor correctly, not the not the center. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Um, can you try doing what um, Sniper Echo has just, popped, just suggested there by middle mouse clicking and alt drag to move the pivot location on the parent object, on the parent of that class? Of objects, I don't know about using the end key. Can you, I, I I don't know about that. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It should work. I would have thought. You move the pivot temporarily. Get it to drop it to the floor or whatever you're trying to align it to. Uh, I have not tried it. I'm not sure. So and, and, I, and I do know what, you, what you're saying, uh, real default chaos. But yeah, I've never actually. I don't t tend to move the pivot point on any of my objects. Uh, I tend to, if I, if I need the pivot to be just at a, a certain spot, I will uh, make sure it's in the right spot in my 3D program before I import the asset. But I understand that that's not really going to help you if you're creating a, a blueprint of multiple objects. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, Sniper says that method works to permanently set the pivot offset. However, I'm not sure that the offset is used when the end key is used. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. Uh, Smurpery says, are any assets in your scene blueprints? Are any of mine blueprints? Um, let me think. I, I do have, like, the physics assets, they're blueprints. So... Like these chandeliers, uh, the lights up here, they are blueprints. I'm just trying to find something that's not a physics asset that might be a blueprint. Um, uh, maybe, maybe these urn things, they might be, I might have those as, uh, let me have a look. I think uh, basically when you create a class of blueprint like that, it's called, you, I call it a prefab, but um, so let me see what, what I've got here. I do have some prefabs, so let's have a look. Might be under lights. Okay, now this is a, this is a prefab here. So it's basically the uh, the sculpture, light, and the base. I put those two objects together as a prefab. So we've got the static mesh of the base and the static mesh of the light. But you see with my pivot point, because I wanted this to align to the ground, my pivot is at the base, but I made sure that, but when I exported this asset, that that's where the pivot point was because I knew I wanted to align it to the ground. Um, what Sniper Echo is talking about. 
if we jump back outside so we've got a bit of room to move let's drag in this prefab where is it where pivot set pivot offset that's what sniper is talking about Uh, Real Default K says more trying to do a permanent fix. Uh, I don't think there is a permanent fix apart from re. Yeah, I don't think there is. Uh, no way of doing that. No, no. I, and I know that because uh, when you create um, physics objects like doors that open, all that sort of stuff, unless the pivot point is in the exact right spot, the, you're not going to be able to create a blueprint to open your door properly. Uh, and in the past, I'd looked at that because I'd imported an, an object that was the, where the pivot wasn't correct. I was, I was trying to make a gate, like an outside gate. Uh, and I was trying to find a way to actually save the new pivot position, but there, were, there was no way when I was looking at doing it, which is why the best way to do it is to actually make sure the pivot's in the right spot before you export the object. Um, and again, if you've got a group of, say, rocks, Maybe a better way to do it will be to put that grouping together inside of your 3D program, export that as one mesh instead of different rock meshes. That way you can set your pivot exactly where you want it inside of your 3D program. If you really, really need it, need the option to press the N key to get it to drop. Um, if not, then I would do it by hand. Unless you've got like millions of them that you want, you need to scatter. Generally with, um, with my rock groupings, I do that sort of stuff by hand anyway. Because normally with a group, again, I don't know what you mean by rocks. They could be little pebbles. I'm not sure. But if they're big boulders, usually you want those to be sort of buried in the ground a bit anyway. So you don't want them sitting on, you know, sitting just on top of the ground. They need to be buried into the ground a bit. But yeah, there is no way that I'm aware of to permanently do it. But, but you do have the option here in the pivot menu to actually change your pivot position. But whether that sticks or not, I'm not sure. It never used to, unless Epic changed that. It never used to save the pivot position. It was a temporary thing. But that, that's a blueprint there. And you, so you can right click as Sniper Echo says and go to pivot and move your pivot that way. But I don't know about pressing the end key, whether that will affect dropping an object, pressing the end key or not. Um, our books, yes, so, so yeah, it's not taking great use of the UV space, which is unfortunate. Uh, but let's, let's step to, for curiosity's sake now, let's have a look at the difference between how much memory the, each of these uh, books are using. So if I open up the original here, and then I open up the merged asset here, sort of get in here so we can get a bit of a better look at it. Just, just sort of try and get them in the in the same sort of position so we can compare them a little bit more easily. So you can tell that the the merged asset here is, like I said, a little bit softer. That it's the the texture isn't as crisp, but it's a book pile. It's from a distance. You're never going to get really close to it. It's not too bad. Smurfery says, but that would affect all instances, not just one instance of the rocks. Uh, hang on, let me, let me catch up here. Uh, Real Defy Chaos says, I think I may try to find a way to patent a fix for this issue I'm having. <laughs> I had this issue as well. Like I said, I was trying to make a physics gate that opens and closes. There were two, basically. Uh, and the pivot needs to be at zero, zero, zero for, for, for blueprints to actually do that correctly. And mine wasn't. And I was trying to move the pivot and save the pivot position so that I could get my blueprint to work. But in the end, I had to go back to the 3D program, physically move my pivot position, re-import re the model. Um, so I, I, <laughs> I've come across the problem before as well. 
But that's just me being lazy in my 3D program and not making sure my pivot position was in the right spot to begin with. But a, uh, a, a way to patent it, real to file chaos, um, I'd buy that. Sounds like a great idea. Smurfery says, I wonder if there's a setting for the UV utilis uh, utilization in the converter. Yeah, there's not. Not that I can see. We're talking about the asset merge tool here. Uh, there is there is no way to actually set the UV. There is a, you, you can to get it to to generate UVs. You turn on this generate light map light map UV. That will regenerate the UVs for the entire mesh, not just the light map. But this is put, is not behaving properly. It, it's uh, causing issues only on some assets, but it's causing issues now. Whether those issues are my fault because of my original UV mapping, I don't know. Um, it's possible, <laughs> but I I have found that turning it off, it's never a problem. Turning it on, sometimes we can get those issues where the thing loses its mind. Um, but apart from that, I don't believe there is a way to re UV map inside of the editor. You need to do that in the 3D program and re-import your model again. There are no options in any of these that uh, that give you any control over that. It's all sort of automated. Which is unfortunate, but hey, it's it. It's in a game engine. It's not meant to be used as a 3D modeling program, so I, I get why Epic don't have that in there. Uh, Real Defile Case says, beautiful people, however. Uh, Smurfery says, they're adding 3D modeling to UE4 later, are they? Okay. <laughs> well, it wouldn't surprise me if eventually they did, because they've made... Uh, it used to be you had to to down to install the NVIDIA Apex cloth plugin to do cloth, but now with the new uh, cloth physics in Unreal, you don't need you can do it all in the uh, engine now. So that's that's good. So they are gradually adding stuff to the engine that you used to need a 3D program to do, like the uh, cloth physics. Like I said, you don't need to do that anymore, which is good. Uh, let's do a comparison here. Let's see the difference in sizes between these. So if I go to asset and size map, the original asset was 16.8 megabytes on disk, size on disk, and used 4.8 megabytes of memory. Considering it's got so many textures, that's not too bad. Uh, the new one, the merged one, it probably won't show me because I haven't done a save. Yep, okay. For us to be able to see that, we need to save out this uh, level here so that the engine can read the value. So I'm just going to save all. And Smurfy says it's on the public Trello roadmap. Well, there you go. Sniper says, Phil, have you tried the bake out materials function when you open an asset? No, you're talking, let's have a look at that. I think that's for lotting though. You're talking about this one here, aren't you? Yeah, I haven't actually played with this. I have to have, have to read up a bit on this. I haven't. Yeah, my, I assume this was more for baking out uh, materials for your log values. But no, I haven't looked at that. But let's check this baked out one now for size. Okay, now we have six point one megabytes is the size on disk. And the memory is 231 kilobytes. So we've got, again, 6.2 megabytes and 231 kilobytes, as opposed to the original mesh, which is 16.8 megabytes on disk and 4.8 megabytes of memory. So memory has been reduced by more than 4 megabytes. And I can't remember what the size on disk of the other one was, 16.8 on that one. 6.1. So 10 meg, we save about 10 meg on the size on disk and we save, how much was it? And we save uh, about four and a half megabytes uh, in memory. For a slight reduction in quality, which we could probably get back if I took this asset into Max and did it manually. So if I was to take the books into 3D Studio Max, I could get that, I could I could re-UV map it so that we didn't lose any quality like we see here. 
It's all a question of time and effort, whether it's worth it for what the asset is, all those decisions you guys have to make on your own when you're making whatever you're making in the engine. Yeah, that one. Yeah, no, I haven't tried that. I, I, I will have to look at it at some stage, just bake out materials, but I assume this was more for lotting levels. But I'll check it out. They've got all these little different things everywhere sprinkled throughout the Unreal Engine that um, I've never used. And this is an example of it. I've never actually used this um, baking option. So I'm not really sure. I'd have to read up on it before I start experimenting with it. <laughs> Even though I do, I do backups of my project here. Um, I don't want to do anything that might mess stuff up too much because I've got this deadline happening. <laughs> I need to get this build done. So maybe once uh, the business build is delivered, I can start playing around with some of these things that I haven't actually used before, see how they work. Um, a good example too is just the new Chaos Physics engine, which I, I, is not in this version of Unreal. It's in the preview version that you can download at the moment from um, Epic's website. There's all these new tools and in, as in that as well that people have to come to grips with, and yeah, so they're always adding all these new little things in the engine. I, I know this has been here for a while, bake out materials, but I've never actually used it, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out though. Like I said, once this build is done, I won't do it until then. Just, just to be on the safe side. Because <laughs> you have no idea how stressful it can be to have a deadline. To have to meet a deadline. Even though it's a soft deadline and if I missed it, I wouldn't, I'm not breaking contract or anything, you know. I, I'd still, I've given my word as to a time frame and I'd like to be able to stick to it. Because you're only as good as your word. You know, you got to under-promise and over-deliver. That's always better. They'll, they'll remember you fondly by doing that, as opposed to over-promising and under-delivering. Uh, so, yeah, we... I, I could, like I said, take this into Max and I could get the... I could redo it by hand and we would get a better result, particularly because the UV maps that uh, Unreal here has decided to use for its Atlas are pretty strange. Um, as far as how much texture space they're using up. Um, but again, because these books, like I said, we're never really going to see them. Like, let me jump back into the level and let's have a look at how close we will get to these books if we're going to be running around. Um, let's go back to lit mode. Oh, I'm thinking, where are my books? I'll look at them inside of here because this is more, more representative of where books are going to be. So we've got a book pile here on the table that the um, the talisman here is sitting on. So if I just play the level here, uh, pay no attention to these. That's just because we're playing this uh, outside of the way it's supposed to be played. I have all of these different blueprint scripting set up for different actions that you perform in the game. And because we're not going through the main menu, loading the level properly, then it's it's setting up the blueprints prematurely. Uh, so if I look here, you see, I, I can't get any closer to these books than this. So that's as close as I can get to the books, to the book pile. So if I could pick the books up like I can with this bit of paper, well, then it would be more of an issue. But because I can't pick the books up and I can't get closer than that, I really don't think that slight reduction in quality of the texture is going to be noticeable. Uh, Galen says, did you guys see Ubisoft's plans on using Blender as a dev tool? Yeah, we were talking about it yesterday, Galen. It's pretty cool. It's, it's probably going to take a while for them to fully move their pipeline to Blender, I would have thought, unless they've been developing their, their pipeline tools already for the, for the last couple of years using Blender, I don't know. But that's, that's, that is cool. It's one step closer to making Blender take over the world and, and, and set aside Max and Maya and all the others. But I love Max. Max is my baby. Um, but it does mean that I really should start playing, playing a little bit more with Blender, I think, just to make sure my skills are up to date. <laughs> So all you guys that are into Blender, you've got a head start on everyone else. And it is awesome news, as Snucker Echo says. Smokeberry says, I haven't looked into what Ubisoft said. I only heard a headline that they released some tools to the public. 
Apparently, they're going to release anything that they create for the studio, any pipeline tools uh, that they create for Blender, they're going to release them to the public. So that's really cool because some of these studios can make some really, really, really useful stuff to to help um, speed up their pipeline use. And if they make that available to everyone else, that will be super cool. Uh, in fact, l let's do a comparison here. So I'm just going to cancel that. Let's throw a, that merged book pile on the table temporarily so we can compare the two side by side. I'm just going to uh, see what scale I'm working at here and make sure I copy that so that they're both identical in size. Let's pull in the book pile because it'll be a bit smaller. Yep. And just make sure we scale it correctly. And I'll rotate it around so the spine is facing the light so we can see it a little bit better. And we'll move it back a little bit. It's still going to be difficult to see because we're getting a bit more reflection off the spine from the, from the light, but if I move them a little bit. Let's uh, play the level again and let's do a comparison between the two. So the one here on the left is the merged one. The one here on the right is the original. Trying to stay as close as I can, it'll let me get. Uh, basically it's my collision zone, my collision boxes that are preventing me from getting any closer than this, which is fine. I don't want people jumping up on the table in the game. So you see what I mean though, you're not going to notice it in game. Particularly for things like these assets which are really just filler. They're just there to make the room look pretty. They're not, they don't, they serve no other function at all. Um, and you're not going to get people playing the game saying, hmm, let me look at the spine of that book. I don't like the texture there at the spine of that book. If it was low enough that people noticed, then yeah, sure, they're going to comment. but. If people are just casually playing the game, they're not going to notice the slight reduction in texture quality. I can get a position here where we can sort of see both of them at the same time. You see between this one and this one. And I'll stop moving the camera so we can see it a little bit better. You're not going to tell the difference. People are not going to know. I mean, I know and you know because we've seen the difference up close, but uh, in gameplay, no, people won't know. Uh, Smurfery says, I haven't looked, uh, Smurfery says, okay, I Googled it and there's the link. So yeah, uh, if I was really, really pedantic and really fussy, and I still may before the game is released if I have the time, the game, this game is due to be released until uh, Halloween of next year, so October of next year allowed plenty of time for us to do the development of the game and make sure it's polished as much as possible and all of that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> because, you know, I'm in charge of having this game made, as opposed to when I've worked in games development before where I've had people above me saying, we want this now, we want this now, we want this now. Uh, I decided that, uh, the, well, not just I, the team that are working with me on this game, we decided that we're going to make sure that we give ourselves enough time to do it properly because uh, many of us have worked in games development before. We're, we're very familiar with the crunch and, and, and managers saying, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Uh, we wanted to enjoy what we were doing, so uh, we allowed an, a large amount of time for release to make sure it can be as polished as possible. So depending on how much time I have left toward the end of the dev cycle, um, I may come back and re-UV map some of these by hand anyway. But like I said to you, looking at these two books side by side, you're not going to be able to tell the difference, really. People are not going to notice. So there you go. <laughs> but we want it now, Galen says. <laughs> and does that matter? No, that does not matter. <gasps> You'll get it when it's ready and not before. 
So yeah. Uh, so, and considering we're, we're saving so much on disk size and texture memory and memory size, it's it's worth doing. It's worth swapping them out with the uh, optimized version here because it's reducing the number of draw calls as well, which again is a really uh, it is one of the things that for a game engine that can really start to slow it down is the number of draw calls. Now, DirectX 12 has improved on that quite a lot. But this is running at the moment in DirectX 11. Um, uh, I, I'm supposed to be making this. Uh, I, I won't go into it, but I may. Um, I probably will end up converting this to DirectX 12 soon-ish. But at the moment, it's DirectX 11. Uh, I'm working in DirectX 11. So when it, it's converted direct to DirectX 12 draw calls are less of an issue but it's still good to optimize an, an asset anyway why use more draw calls than you need even if the engine can de can generally handle it it's better to, to use fewer and then you can use more stuff you know what i mean than having too many on something that's unnecessary so galen says phil has already gone corporate and it's forgetting the small guy <laughs> no i haven't no um, but yeah, it, it, it will be converted to DirectX 12 more than likely. Uh, and it more than likely will have real-time ray tracing and all of that rubbish. But, oh, I'm not going to call it rubbish. All of that stuff put in. It's not rubbish. It can be very cool, but um, a lot of... Yeah. I'm looking at implementing all of that as well because you can actually do all of that inside of the Unreal Engine now. You can do real-time ambient occlusion, all the real-time ray tracing stuff, reflections, all that sort of thing. All the stuff that's big now for the NVIDIA line of cards. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. At the moment, I'm more concerned with just getting a build together that I can send out. And then we've got other areas we've got to make for the game. I've got to put a, like a, a basement section in. I've got to put an attic section in, a roof, rooftop attic thingy. Um, we're still going to do a kitchen. We're still going to do a bathroom. We're still going to do a bedroom. Uh, there are two other rooms that I want to turn into like um, studies with books and that sort of thing. And then I want to have areas that are off inside of the forest as well, just to give the game a bit of meat, because you can't have a game based around one building. Uh, there have to be a couple of other areas for people to explore. So all of that's got to go in. So there's, there's still a lot of work to be done before I have to worry about doing a, doing a conversion. <laughs> Did that go up, Sniper? I wasn't paying attention to OBS. I want to make sure that my commands are going off. <laughs> Why are you giving me the stink eye anyway? <laughs> what have I said that it deserves the stink eye? Uh, so I'm going to swap these assets out now, I think. I think. Okay, there, there are a few. I used this book pile one, two, three, four times within the uh, within the building. So I'm just going to go through and swap them out now. But I'm just going to move these into the correct folders so everything's nice and organised. <laughs> move the wrong one. I don't want you in there. I want you in there. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go and um, swap out these assets now for the merged versions. You see, I did the swap there. Did you notice anything? Did you? Did you notice a difference when I just swapped that out? No. <laughs> it didn't go all. Do it again. It should have gone all. You, you spelled it correct and everything, didn't you? Because mods can set these. Uh, if, you, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you can set these animated things up yourself. But Mod should be able to do it too. He's lying? Uh, okay. Yeah, well, now, now you get a slap. You get a slap now. Uh, you guys can set those off yourself. And Mods can set them up too. Did it, do it again, Sniper Echo. Do it now. Do it now. Now. Oh, I'm going to be looking at OBS. I want to see if it goes off. So do it. Do it now then. Do it again now. Any of you mods that are in chat, do it. 
I want, I want to see if any of the if the command goes off. It was working fine yesterday, so Sniper Echo, you're either... It's going off, I can see it here. So there you go. A sniper girl, it's good to see you. How you been? He wasn't paying attention to his own stink, I know that's right. He sets these things up and just looks away. It's good to see you, sniper girl. Hope you're well. Uh, so yeah, I swapped that out and you didn't even notice now. <laughs> uh, mod slaps going off left, right and center. That's good. He deserves a mod slap for saying it didn't go off. Uh, so yeah, we swapped that out and to me, to my eye at this distance, it looks identical. So let's go through and um, do the others. <laughs> uh, so book pile five is the one that I'm swapping out. So let's just go up, focus in so I can find where it is and swap it out. There we go. No, I, let's go to the next one. Focus in. If you're seeing a color difference, it's mainly because the lighting will need to be rebuilt. Um, every time you change an asset or add a new asset, I have to rebuild the lighting. So, And the last one. And swap that out. But for the most part, you're not going to notice. You sold your normal tangent issues. Good to hear, Smurfberry. And that's what you showed us in that image. He popped an image on Discord. He was working, I think, on the normals for that plant that we saw the render of there in the, on the Discord. Smurfberry says, back into substance soon. We'll be probably back into Substance Painter next week when we go back to the uh, to the Temple of the Winds. Sniper Girl says, uh, Mod Slap was for you for all the abuse you give us on a daily basis. Ah, oh, you're giving me a slap. I don't deserve a slap. You all deserve a slap. <laughs> oh dear. So rude to me. You guys are so rude and mean to me. So mean to me. Let's come back up in here and uh, see what else we can optimize. Uh, there are actually a few book piles we could do, I think. <laughs> come to think of it. Let me have a look here. Did we do this? I think we did this book pile. Yep, that's the optimized one. Uh, Snappy Girl says, and yet you allow us to be mods for some reason. <laughs> Yes, why did I allow you, you you guys and girls to be mods? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Like, this is another book poll here, book poll four. It's like we only use this book poll once, so still, it's a good one to optimize because look at the number of draw calls here. So let's find it and optimize it. It's that one there. Again, I'm just gonna do this outside because I've got more room to move. We can delete these book piles now because we don't need them. And I'm just going to do a save all, just go on the safe side. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, uh, have the interview with the production studio on Friday. Yes, we'll all keep our fingers crossed for your, for your interview. We're all hoping you get it. Moving over to California to turn into one of the, uh, the jet set of California, hey? Yep, we wish you well. Uh, it's a phone interview, I'm assuming. A lot of the initial interviews nowadays are phone interviews. Yep, phone, cool. Phone interviews are really good. Like I said to you last time, or any time um, I do a phone interview, it's much more relaxing. You can stay dressed however you like and you're, you know, in your snuggie or whatever it is you wear at home. Uh, you don't have to get dressed up to go to an interview or anything like that. So in that regard, it's uh, always much better. That and the fact too that you're more—I'm at least more relaxed in a phone interview because I'm in my own element as opposed to in their office. Not that interviews, after you do enough of them, they start to become, yeah, whatever. 
But when you're starting out, I know it can be a bit, it can be, and I'm not suggesting you're like this sniper girl, um, but I know with some young people, it can be quite uh, intimidating and nerve wracking having to go to an interview or have an interview. Just relax, guys and girls. Just relax and you'll be fine. Don't be nervous. Try not to be anyway. And if you don't know an answer to a question, you just say, I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the best way to go than trying to bullshit your way through an answer. Um, Snappy Girl says it'll be fun. Have a face-to-face -face interview that day in Chicago. Oh, okay. I will probably still be in city when I do the phone interview for the studio. Gee, you're a busy girl. You got a face-to-face -face in Chicago on the same day as you got a phone interview in uh, California. Wow. Snappy Girl says I honestly rather go to the place in person, to be honest. So everybody is different. I like phone interviews, personally. Like I said, because I can just turn into a blob at home and don't have to worry about what I'm wearing and all that sort of stuff, unless it's a Skype thing. Um, then I have to be a little bit more mindful of what I'm wearing. Uh, so yeah, generally phone interviews I prefer, but I do know that interviews can be nerve-wracking, so just try and relax. They're just another human being like you, me, and everyone else with the same faults that we all have. Uh, yeah, and if there's a question that they ask that you, you can't answer, then you're better off saying, I'm sorry, I don't know, and trying to bullshit your way through. Okay, let's pull out this other book pile, which is this one, Book Pile Mesh 4. My phone going off again in the background, my apologies. Uh, never ending here. It's either my mobile phone, my email client, or the home phone line. Sniper, uh, sorry, Sniper Girl says, if there's a question I don't know, the answer is C, right? That's right. <laughs> C. When in doubt, pick C. That's, that's exactly right. Okay, so we have our book pile selected. Let's open up the... Uh, let's just close this down because we don't need that open at the moment. Let's open up the merge tool. Everything should be stayed the same. I'm just going to do a merge actors. Manor House, Models, Building, Merged. We'll get there in the end. Okay, let's get it to save that out. Uh, so yeah, for your benefit, Sniper Girl, because you weren't here earlier when I mentioned what the problem was we were having yesterday with this tool, it's this Generate Light Map UV option. It, it, it automatically defaults to being turned on. Turn it on. If you have those problems, uh, that's causing it to lose its mind. As we found out, or as I found out yesterday. So it works, yes it does. Uh, so far we've not had a problem with the assets we've been uh, merging. So that was the problem here. The fact that it defaults to turn generate light map UVs on, that is causing it to lose its mind and not UV map anything more than one than the first star shader. Again, I'm not sure if it's a bug that's maybe in the asset tool or if it's something I've done wrong uh, with my UVs, but I, if, if it's generating new UVs, I, I don't know. I'm assuming it's not using my UV, so I wouldn't have thought my UVs would be a problem. But it may be. Although, um, when I UV mapped these books, um, I did it pretty standard. They're just flat and mapped. So, I, I can't see how my UVs could have caused a problem for it. The, these little bugs pop into code all the time. So, it may just be something that um, that's new to to because i am using the very latest version of the tool of the engine as well 4.22.3 the hotfix.3 could have maybe been introduced in that i don't know so it takes it a little while because it has to combine these two four six eight different textures shaders into one so it does it will take just a little while to work all that out it's your fault always, Phil. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it's always Phil's fault. It's never the software. It's always Phil. The software is perfect and Phil is flawed. OK. 
come on, you can do it. <laughs> uh, so we've got one book here and then, then I think I'm just trying to work out how many other book piles there might be. I don't think there are many more book piles. I didn't go too nuts with the books. Uh, Sniper Girl says, well, the gods of Unreal are flawless, so I have to be a mortal. It has to be a mortal spot. <laughs> That's right, because there are never, ever any errors in code ever on anything. Everything is always perfect. Come on, Tool, you can do it. There we go. It got there in the end. Let's just have a look at our book pile. This is the merged one, and again, that, that'll that be fine. It, I, it may have reduced the quick clarity just a little bit, but because we're getting such big savings in memory and, and on size on, on disk, it's really worth doing. That and, the, that and the fact that we're reducing the draw call so much as well. It's worthwhile. Uh, so I'm just going to remove this little one here because we don't want that floating in space. And I'm going to go back over to where, where, where was that book pile? Was it over here? I think it was this one. And let's let's look at it as I swap it out and let's see if we notice any different. So this, this is the original. I'm going to swap it out now for the, for the um, optimized version. Did you notice anything? I didn't notice any difference between the two. Uh, but now we've only got one draw call, so that's cool. Now let me just move these into their respective folders so that everything again is nice and organized. And you can go into there. And I'm going to do a save. Okay, now let's just wander through the level here and see if we can see any other books anywhere. I did that one. And I did the one out here on the table. And there are no books here. You know, I was playing, it's actually funny, I was playing through the level last night and um, I have a sound cue going on these and it freaked me out. I'd forgotten about the sound cue and I was coming down the steps here playing the game when all of a sudden I heard the sound cue go off and it frightened the life out of me. <laughs> and so I shared that, I thought it was funny, I spooked myself. Just just the noise going off all of a sudden, yeah, just caught me by surprise. Uh, Smurfery says, oh hey, the baking is done, time to inspect the results. <laughs> nah, man, 16-bit 8K PSD textures are large, 384 megabytes each, yes they are huge. They get huge. Actually, 384 megabyte for a 16-bit 8K is pretty good, actually, a Photoshop file. I, I've got some Photoshop files that are in the gigabytes. Depending on the res... Uh, yeah. So some of them are in the gigs. Um, books. That's what we're doing. We're looking for books. No books in here. No books here. And... No books in here. Oh, are there? Yes, there are books in here. <gasps> okay, I think this might be one grouping of books. Yeah, it is. And just look at this, would you? Look at this. Look at the amount of, of, of textures on this. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14 shaders on this book pile. 14! 14 of them! Textures, Smurfberry says, yeah, well, that's true. The, the, these are a, This is a shader, but it only has one texture. It doesn't have a normal map or anything like that. Uh, otherwise, it would have gotten insane. But there are 14 of them in this book pile. 14 textures, separate textures. Let's see if we can't um, do something about that. So let me find it here, and there it is. 
And let me go back outside so we can just do our bake. And let's bake them out. Man, 14 of them. Unbelievable. Everything should be able to stay the same. This will take it a little while to bake out because <laughs> it's got to go through 14 different uh, textures. And we're just going to rename it. Re just making sure I don't have one named that already for the book poles. Two and mesh. Nope, that should be good. And we'll wait for it to bake out. Just got to catch up on what's going on in the gallery in Discord. A smurfer has posted a link to add to Headclot's blog link regarding Ubisoft Development Fund. So if you want to read up on that, jump on the Discord, guys. Fourteen, man! I can't, I can't believe I used so many different textures on that one asset. In my defence. Uh, I was reusing all of these different shaders on all of the different book piles. So it wasn't like I had 14 shaders just for one asset. They, they, they were being shared amongst uh, a lot of different book pile assets. As you can see here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't use all of these book piles in the level though. So I made more than I needed. Um, but I was reusing them, so which we can't do now that we're baking them out. But we're <laughs> we're still saving so much in texture memory and um, and size on disk. It's worth doing. So yeah, reusing shaders that can be a good way to optimize a level, but you got to be careful, and, and you shouldn't do as many as I've done. That's that's pretty <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> But again, I was making a cinematic, remember? When I put this this whole thing together, this, uh, this level you're looking at, it was with the intention of making a cinematic, which I did. Um, it was not intended to be used real-time game, and I, that's why I have to go through now and look at some of these assets to make sure that, uh, that, that, that they're suitable for a real-time game. Because we don't want to, we don't, we don't want to need people to run, you know, quad GTX 2080 Ti's to be able to run it. That would severely limit the market for the game. They're doing painting outside in the stairwell. I can smell it. Smell of paint. Yuck. So yes, we've got to put in the uh, the basement, the attic. Uh, I do want to have some sort of tunnel system that leads from the basement out into the forest, into a spot in the forest. I want to bring the Temple of the Winds that we're working on uh, into this game level at some stage as well, as part of a different area. I want to put a little outhouse somewhere in the forest, because I think that'd be funny. I'll, I'll put a kitchen and bathroom in the building, but I want to put an outhouse somewhere, a, a really run down disgusting outhouse somewhere in the forest. That's the plan. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Gives you guys a chance to listen to the music playing in the background anyway. do it. It just feels so weird to sit here and not talk. I just can't do it. I can't do it. It's not in my DNA. I've got to constantly be talking. It's just hard for me to talk about something while I can't do anything while I'm talking. So you guys in Europe, the heat wave, it's been on the news. 
and you guys in the US actually I think the heat wave only, has only just sort of broken for you as well that was pretty bad global warming we're all gonna die I'm telling you Mr. Optimistic here yeah, but I, and I'm not looking forward to summer in this country. We're in winter at the moment, but the summer, I'm not looking forward to summer. It was hot, we were very scared. I know it was hot. They've been telling us how hot it's been for you guys over in the US and in Europe. So I sympathize because, uh, yep, I went through the same thing in December, just gone over our, our summer period. It was terrible, really bad. So I'm not looking forward to this coming summer. We start summer in um, around December, so it's like, yeah, December, January, February sort of thing as, as summer months. So we have a hot Christmas. You guys in Europe and the US have a cold one, we have a hot one. There you go, what can you do? Move to the top of a mountain where it's snowing constantly, that's what I want to do. We did do a save before I started this, just in case, but uh, it, it will take it a while to merge 14 different textures into one. There we go. Uh, again, all, all of these are real, would have really be better uh, for me to have done by hand inside of Max. Let's just have a look here to see how these texture merge, this texture merge went. Going to put them near each other so we've got a frame of reference that's relative to each other. You don't have to zoom all over the level. Now, again, uh, th this pile, it, probably a little bit more than the others, oops, has really, I, I really don't like that. Like, I can, I can deal with a little bit of uh, loss in definition, but not this much. That's too much. I really don't like that at all. Uh, the other one was much better. Th this is too blurred. So, this might be a good one for me to take into Max to optimize. I'm going to remove these because they're unacceptable. Unacceptable! Just making sure I'm deleting the correct ones, yep. <laughs> uh, again, I'm going to do a save all. And we're going to do an optimization by hand in Max. Shock horror, not by hand. No. It's a good good way for me to show you how I would optimize another that's difficult or complex, but um, maybe some people would like to know, don't know how you would go about doing it. So I'll show you. I will show you. Don't say I never do anything. I'm just going to wait for Max to load up because it always, the new version of Max 2020 always seems to take forever. Come on, Max, you can do it. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's still thinking. Uh, it was going to act, but now it's still thinking. You know, I'm sure this is uh, because of the um, Autodesk license check that's going on in the background. File unit is inches, system unit is centimeters. We want the system unit. Uh, I think that's because I've just made a change to Max. Not that long ago. Um, okay, let's see if we can't find these books. Now I've got to remember where I put them because it was so long ago I worked on it. Where did I put the books? Books on shelf. Okay, that might that might be a good spot. Antique books. That's the one. 
Antique books attached. That's the one we want. Okay. And we're working with this book pile here. This is the one that we're trying to optimize inside of our, inside the engine. Smurfberry says my curvature contrast is different. And now I'm wondering if my bake settings were different this time around, or if it's just a consequence of changing the model. Sniper Echo says, I think Blender taking off so much will be good be a good thing for Autodesk users. Hopefully they focus on making their products faster and cheaper. I agree, Sniper Echo. If they've got some competition, it might give them a kick up the backside that they need to actually start doing some, you know, when, when they do an update, that they give users something truly new and useful. Because they haven't, every, every new version of um, Max, while well, they've added new things, it's not like the old days where they used to add amazing new things. It's just, they, did they just add enough to keep people happy, to keep subscribers subscribing? So I agree. It'll be a good kick up the backside for them. Sniper Girl says, an update, keep dreaming. <laughs> oh, so true. Let us just isolate this book pile. It's an edit poly, so that's fine. Now I need to do a render to texture here. That's basically what I need to do. And actually I'm thinking because I'm in Max now already, I might do it for all of the book piles. Even though we've done the merge using the tool, I'm here. Why not? So let's uh, let's first send this over. To, actually, let me just first look at uh, the unwrap on this. It's overlapping UVs. It's let's do this. I'm going to set this to map channel two. I'm going to move my UVs. I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to get it to repack because I want to see how the UVs are being laid out. I may not need to re-UV map it. And that should be fine actually for an unwrap. Good. So now what I can do is I can, I can, I'm wondering why, well I didn't have access to my move tool, I always do that, I forget to turn off the, um, the unwrap. I'm just going to duplicate this grouping because I want to do a comparison between the two once they've been re-UV mapped. And I'm going to turn seams off. Okay, so now I'm going to do a render to texture. Again, Max, <laughs> lose, you got to wait for Max to, you know, get its shit together. It looks like it's not doing anything, but it, it's just thinking. Uh, Snappy Girl says, well, put it this way, I'm using my 2016, I see no reason to update versions at all. I regret updating to 2020 because it's been so weird and sluggish and slow. 2018 was fine. See? <laughs> What's that about? Why is it taking so long to, to, to do this? What have, they done, what have they done to the program to make it so sluggish? Uh, Smokebury says, I've given up on the idea that Autodesk will ever do anything significant with Mudbox again. Yeah, I wouldn't hold, that, hold my breath either. Unfortunately, I don't know why they do things like that Autodesk. I mean, there is no other program apart from Z that's a competitor to ZBrush apart from Mudbox, but nope. Autodesk said no. We're not gonna we're not gonna develop it anymore. I'm gonna add a diffuse map. I'm using map channel two here. Uh, diffuse. And let's try 2K diffuse for this one. Remember last time we had to go to 4K because the, uh, actually it wasn't this pile, but the other piles that were half the size. We may still have to go up to 4K, we'll see how we go. Uh, but let's try a 2K texture here. And I'm gonna save it to my book piles folder. But I'm just gonna create a new folder so I don't get myself completely confused with everything else. 
And we're going to call this one um, optimized. <laughs> and let's let's do this properly. Opt for optimized. There we go. That's easy. Uh, I'm going to call a book pile book pile A. I'm going to save it as a target file. I could save it as a PNG if I wanted to, but I'll save it as a target file. Because why not? I'm not going to give it an alpha though. 2K, everything's good. Map channel 2. Let's do a render. It's going to complain because I haven't assigned it to a channel, but that's okay. Okay, that's good. That's done. Let's load up the new texture over here where it's empty. And that's the texture we want. Let's turn them on so we can see it in the viewport. And I'm just going to assign the texture to the one that's selected. And I'm going to open up my channel info. And I'm going to copy UV channel 2 over UV channel 1. I'm also going to remove channel 2. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to collapse my stack. Uh, actually, I'm not going to remove channel 2 because channel 2 will be good for the light map. So channel 1 will be the UV map in, in UE4, channel 2 will be the light map. Uh, because it's a flattened mapping, so it should work well for a light map. But now, if we look at this... You see how we're getting a much better result now? There's virtually no difference between this one and this one. They're pretty much identical with a 2K texture as opposed to a 4K that we were using in Unreal when we got it to do its automatic tool. So the automatic tool is good, but for some things you're always better doing it by hand. So we're going to export this one and bring it into the UE4 engine and replace it with the one that's got 14 different textures. Uh... Let me catch up with the chat here. You guys have been chatting away while I've been doing, working on what I'm doing. Um, Sniper Girl says, yeah, I have to agree with you. Think Mudbox went the way of the dinos. I think you're right. Smurfberry says, well, which is why I'm taking an interest in Blender now since the new update is here and they've got a sculpting room now. That's cool. And they are integrating Blender, uh, sorry, in Mudbox into Maya a bit as well. Unless they've stopped doing that too. Who knows with Autodesk? Um, Smurfberry says, I mean, they had one in 2.7.9, but it's gotten that, re that fresh new paint like the rest of the 2.8 user interface. Uh, Smurfberry says, last year Autodesk made some mo movements about Mudbox putting forward a new face to the community and said that she's got a small team working on it, but blat it's blatantly obvious that their, her tiny team is not being given any significant resources to do the development that Mudbox needs. Again, that would not surprise me with Autodesk. Uh, Sniper Echo says, I heard a guy compare development of Max with the Gamebryo. <laughs> uh, don't you lump Max with that turd Gamebryo? Gamebryo doesn't exist anymore, thank God. Max is much better than Gamebryo. Man. I don't, but uh, again, I don't know how much, how many resources Autodesk are, are, develop, are devoting to um, Max's development. Max is a very popular program. Don't 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 believe the bullshit that people are saying that Max is dying. It's not. Nearly every Archbiz studio I have ever worked in or, or or know people that work at use Max. Max has taken over the Archbiz industry. It, it was always really big and it's always going to be in Archbiz. I mean now Maya took over in uh, in games development a little bit. Max is still used in games as well. Um, because of Maya's animation is better and Maya is better at doing animation than Max. Max's tools, but Max ain't going nowhere. 
So, you know, Autodesk are foolish not to give enough dev resources to develop Max. They're only doing the bare minimum on all of their software. Just the bare minimum to keep you and me and everyone subscribed. That's all they're doing. They're not, they're not doing anything more. It's not like, not like they used to when you used to have to spend thousands to buy the software. They needed to give you a reason to actually spend those thousands of dollars to buy the new version. So they used to give you substantial new things. They don't do that anymore. That's the, that's the other problem with subscription. Whether it's uh, Autodesk or Adobe or Pixelogic or, who, or whoever. As soon as they go subscription, then they can, then, then they don't need to do much because they're getting a regular income anyway from you and me and everyone else. So that's the problem. The subscription is evil. Subscription models are evil with software. Evil. That and the fact you never own the software, which sucks. <laughs> Smurfbury says, like it's obvious, just based on the way she interacts with the community, uh, which isn't her fault and doesn't make her crap. It's just the poor set of cards they've dealt her. Snappy Girl says, I can honestly see Autodesk failing as a company eventually. If they keep up their practices, I wouldn't, well, let's hope not. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to see them go. I love Max. Uh, Snappy Reiko says, yeah, if the resources were there, I'm sure she would, I'm sure there would be massive changes. Uh, Snowberry says, I'm also taking an interest in 3D code. I used it to do a, to, to fix some of the symmetry crap that this blue plant, to be honest, had a lot of industry software steals its ideas from 3D code, which frequently invents features before all the other players do. Well, yeah, 3D code, I know a lot of people love 3D code. Cookie, it's good to see you, Cookie. My apologies for taking so long to say hello. You know how slow I am with the chat, though, Cookie. It's good to see you, Cookie. I hope you're well. Uh, Snappy Girl says, unless Blender takes over that, they're only slowly taking over the world. Well, that's true. Uh, Cookie says, I want Blender to kick 3D Studio Max's butt, though. So Autodesk will actually be pushed to innovate. I don't disagree with any of that. I agree 100% with what you're saying. Uh, I want Blender to, to do well and, and kick Autodesk's butt as well, because I want... I want, you know, Autodesk to get their shit together and make sure Max is performing properly and, and that we get decent updates and stuff, like new features that are useful. Um, I was just bitching about this new version of Max 2020 being really sluggish and really slow. They seem to devote a lot of time to creating things like this service they have running in the background all the time that checks your license to make sure you're actually using a, a, a bona fide version of Max which I think is what's slowing Max down. So, you know, they devote time and resources to make that, but they don't devote time and resources to actually make sure the program is bug free or give us new features that we want. Uh, and that, that, that's getting really annoying. <laughs> So I agree with you, Cookie. Sniper Ricker says, yeah, I hope Autodesk get the finger out and start innovating and fixing stuff. Me too. Uh, Cookie says, I know of bugs that have been around since Max 9. So do I. I've spoken about this so many times. This, this, this mirror tool, messing UVs up if you use the mirror tool. Not only that now, though, in Max 2020, sometimes when you just shift, uh, copy a mesh, that will mess up your UVs. What is going on at Autodesk? What are they doing? I mean, that's basic stuff. You, you, <laughs> how can you do, how can you not fix that for so long? The mirror tool, it's been, a, it's been a problem since Max 2016. And now the, the uh, shift copy is messing UVs up. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, copy says I can crash Max at will. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Uh, Smurfer says that reminds me of a video Autodesk release, like, I don't know, three or four years ago now. Of some experimental modeling and sculpting tools for Maya that were being prototyped. None of those ever made it into production. All of them were amazing and all of them are dead. Yeah. Uh, Cookie says, sounds like the, uh, the interim was, sounds like the intern was touching the mess data structure in Maya. I don't know what, what, what interns are working on Max at the moment, but yeah. Sometimes if you shift drag a copy, it will mess your UVs up now in Max 2020. You know, it was bad enough that the mirror tool did it, but now that she just shift clicking, shift dragging is messing uh, UVs up. Makes you want to tear your hair out. I mean, it's easy enough to fix. You just jump into the channel info and copy the new UVs across, but you shouldn't have to. 
you should not have to for something so simple. Uh, Sniper Rekka says, honestly, I only ever use Max as an 8GB file format converter. <laughs> ah, dear. Let's export this model back so I can send it over to UE4. Um, I'm just going to rename it so that if I come back to this file in the future, which I may, uh, I know what's going on. Book pile a opt for optimize. That'll sort of remind me that I've done something with this that's different than this book pile. Uh, I'm just going to make a save and I'm going to export selected and I'm going to save it to my books folder my optimized books folder and we're going to call it book pile A optimized and the default setting should be fine Sniper Rico says, I really like the asset management of Max. Uh, I li look, I like Max. I, look, I, I like it. I like the interface. Uh, I've used the software for so long. Um, I'm familiar with it. I like the material editor. I like I like the the, the uh, modifier stack here. All of this sort of stuff. It makes Max really lovely to use when it works the way it's supposed to. Uh, so yeah, when Max is working properly, I love it. But it's just, there's so many little things in Max that they water desk really need to pay attention to and fix. That's what's frustrating about Max. Uh, Sniper says it's got some really neat features, and it does. It does have some really neat features and some really neat modifiers uh, and all that sort of stuff. It's it's a nice program. It's just these little little bugs and stuff that make it annoying to use sometimes, unnecessarily. And bugs that they the water desk could fix if they set their mind to it. They just seem to ignore them. They release the software, it has a bug, they move on to releasing the new version of the software, they don't fix the bug, and it just continues on with every new release. And that, that's getting old and really tiring. Uh, let's jump back into UE4 and let's re-import this book model. i just got to make sure I bring it in in the right folder. Actually, we'll, we'll import it into this optimized version anyway. So let's import. Uh, Max Books on Shelf, Antique Books, Optimized, Book Pile. Okay, it's created the shader for me, which is nice. Uh, we did a comparison, so I don't need to do a comparison in the editor. They're going to look identical. It's using a 1 2K texture, which is nice. So let's jump back inside the building to where this book pile is. Oops. Which is here. Oh, so this is the old one that's using 14 or however many there are here shaders. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, Philip. Bad. Uh, and let's swap that out now with this optimized version. Uh, now that's happened because. Uh, I moved the book pile, so I'm just going to undo that, jump back into Max, it's still open, so. And I'm going to, that's the optimized one, I'm just going to move this back in line with this one. And I'm actually going to delete the original one from behind it. I'm going to save this as an incremental file version just because I can and I want to, just in case I ever want to go back. Unlikely, but you never know. I'm just going to re export this again. Yes. Okay. Back into Unreal. Re import our model. And now we should be able to swap them out. 
And there we go. No loss of quality because we did it by hand. Good. Uh, let's just move these into the row folder. Uh, now I'm just going to go through here and just see if there are any other book piles. I should I should actually redo these, this one and this one. I, I won't for right now. I want to get this build done. Uh, but I may come back and just uh, re redo it manually like I did with that other book pile. I, oh, okay, there's a book pile here as well. I know that's using the optimized one that we've already done, so that's good. Okay, there's a book pile here. I think this is the same one we just did, so let's swap this one out for the optimized version. That's all good. Sniper Echo says oh, to Smurfer, I can't wait to see what you think of Blender Sculpt Tool. I don't have the skill to push it at all. <laughs> uh, Smurfer says I still haven't had time to do more than Poker 2.8 for a few minutes since I'm working on this plant, but it seems that uh, with the ICK and some customization, I should be able to turn Blender into a nice tool to use. Mercury says, did you look up that mesh room to Blender plugin? I'm assuming he's talking to Sniper Echo. Because yes, Sniper Echo uses Blender. Galen uses Blender as well. It is a good piece of 3D software and it's only getting better. It's just going to keep getting better and better. Now I'm just uh, sort of looking around here for any other assets that might need optimizing. you see what's going on? NDI, if you look at my cursor going up and down there, it looks a bit, see how it's sort of sticky? It's not sticky on my screen. It's some something going on with uh, NDI and DirectX. Something to do maybe with the latest Microsoft build 1903 of Windows. Yeah, it's, get, it's sticking. So yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd point that out. In case you see me here when I'm sort of rotating around, it's sticking and jumping. That's what's going on. It's smooth on my screen. It's just something to do with NDI. Uh, after the stream today, I'll probably update NDI because they did a, a point 0.1 release update. I can't find any change logs for it, so I don't know if it's going to fix anything or not, but um, I might do that after the stream just to, be, just to see if it makes any difference. Um... Okay, there are these chairs. Now, th th these one, two, three, four, five, this is a good candidate because remember I said anything over three. But what I've noticed with, again, that merge tool with things like these chairs, it doesn't do a great merge. Some assets it just doesn't handle really nicely. Like it'll merge it together, that won't be a problem. But the way it you know, lays out the UVs and the way it applies the texture maps because I did do a test on one of these chairs here last night and while it did it I didn't like the result uh, these are sort of things uh, but, uh, but <laughs> these sort of objects I am better off doing it by hand in Max because the automated tool is just not going to do it for me um, add five textures you know, it's two more than what I'd like, but for now I may just leave that and come back to do it after the build get, goes, gets delivered. Um, actually, that's what I wanted to start doing too. I got caught up in doing uh, texture optimization. I want to start doing some lotting. So, actually, I wanted to do this as well. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. This is six. It's starting to get a bit heavy, so I might I might do this and we'll see how we go. So I might do one more optimization of the harp and then I want to see if I can get some lotting done. Because I want to start doing some lotting on the uh, furniture inside the building. So let me find the harp. And again, I'm going to do this outside so we can have a look at it without everything else going on. So let's pull the harp in. The harp is huge. 
massive hump. <laughs> that looks quite funny. Anyway, size is not an issue. We're only pulling it in so we can look at it. And we can do a comparison between the two. Um, I could scale it down, but then if I want to do a direct replacement inside of the uh, editor, it's not going to match. So. Sniper Girl says, Harp for Giants. That's right. It's a Giants Harp. You guys didn't notice I put these mountains in the background, which I'm probably going to swap out for um, snow-capped versions. And I haven't put trees on them yet, but anyway, they're there. They, they weren't there originally during the cinematic. Uh, so this harp. Let us see if we can do uh, a bake using the automated tool. Let's, let's see what sort of result it gives us. I'm going to keep it at 4K here. Yeah, the harp is selected. Let's do a merge actors. We're going to send it to uh, our merged folder. I'm just going to rename this. And save it. Uh, Sniper Girl says, whomever told you that size isn't an issue, lied to you. Yeah, that, that's, that's my fault though for, um, in fact you see it did that a lot more quickly than the book piles. The book piles though had a lot more shaders. Uh, but let's see what sort of result it gave us here. This is the merged harp here. Oops, just let me undo that. Because I have a habit of, <laughs> it's selecting both and dragging both in, that's not what I want to do. I just want the harp. There we go. Um, but you see with the harp, it's actually not too bad. Um, again, maybe just a slight loss in quality, but nothing that's really noticeable, not to my eye. They look pretty much identical. But we reduced it from, <clears throat> again, from three, six textures to one. Let's do a comparison uh, inside of, um, let, let's do a comparison to see how much memory and stuff it, it's what they're, they're being used. So that's one's the original. This one is the uh, optimized. So yeah, this one's the optimized. Let me just pull out so we can look at it. This one's the original. So original, optimized. So I'm seeing a bit of a difference. What's going on here? Was that just the angle I'm looking at it from? No, it looks like we might have a bit of a problem with uh, with this metallic. I'll have to check that. Um, I'm just going to open up the shader and see what's going on here. All right, I think I understand what the problem here is. Or do I? Uh, I think what I may have done is I might have forgotten to turn on the... And that's, that's what I've done. Silly me. Um, let me just remove the optimize. What, what's happened? I forgot because we were doing the books, I was only using the texture map or I should say the diffuse map. Uh, so I'm just going to delete these. I forgot to turn on the normal roughness, all that sort of jazz. That's the problem. Just before I delete them, I'm going to save the level because otherwise it'll complain that I'm using them in the level. It'll give me this big bright red warning saying, you know, are you sure you want to delete these? 
Uh, let's delete this this one. I wonder why it did it so quickly. And that's the reason. Uh, so let's just do this bake out again. Oh, and I closed it down. So window developer merge actors. Just kept my other settings here. I only had um, diffuse turned on. I need to turn on the normal map, the metallic map and the roughness map. That will help. Uh, everything else is good to go. Let us save it into our right folder. And save. Android Lust, it's good to see you buddy. How are you? My apologies, I just noticed you popped into chat. Uh, says my internet is messed up. Don't think of using my phone until now. <laughs> okay. You have problems with your internet a lot, don't you, Android Lust? I, I can relate until I got the, um, the fiber connection. It was terrible, my internet. Real potato internet. I'm glad you made it though. As Sniper Girl says, I'm glad you made it to Android Lust. I hope you're well. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, I do have transcoding, so you can knock me down if your internet's playing up. Now, what are you guys posting in Discord here? Why is the Discord going on? Okay, now it's finished baking that out. Um, I might just drag it out and we'll double check it. Our huge harp. Uh, and they still look identical, so that's I knew they would because the other one did. So I can actually, actually, no, 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 back in you go. Uh, I'm just going to do a save all so that we can do a comparison on sizes between them. Um, memory size and disk size. Weekend was internet less. Oh no, Android lost. You know, it's really funny you say that because you don't under appreciate just how much you rely on the internet until you, it's not there. Because um, my internet used to go down quite regularly and uh, it, and my cable, my, my fiber connection actually because I was doing some works they gave me notice saying it was going to be down for an hour but just that <clears throat> just for that one hour while it was down I was virtually climbing the walls you just don't you don't appreciate just how much you use the internet until it's not there so I, I feel for your Android dust. Uh, Smurfer says no internet for an entire weekend. Now that would drive me insane. Uh, thankfully, I've got my phone too, so I can I can at least surf the web on my phone if I have to. Android Lust says nice photogrammetry, by the way, Smurfery. There you go. Uh, Sniper Girl says to Android Lust, you didn't kill anyone. How? <laughs> and Android Lust says I had my drugs. 3D modeling. There you go. I'm just looking at what you guys have posted here in the Discord. That's why I'm a little bit distracted because I'm a sticky big. I want to see what people are posting. And I think they're talking about mesh room to blender things. And what's going into the gallery here? Sniper girl, you posted some more screenshots. Nice. We'll show those soon. I'll show them just before I sign off for the day. So soonish sniper girl i will show the images they do look cool uh sniper girl is working on a gas station environment for the post-apocalyptic van she's created you can find all of those images on the discord server so you guys should join the discord if you haven't already um okay i saved that out so now i want to do a comparison between these two so the original here, which has the six materials shaders on it. Again, let me just pull back so we can get an overview. So the original and the optimized version. That's better. Now we have our chrome and stuff back, our gold back. So they look identical. There's virtually no difference between them. Uh, let's look at the how much or how much memory and stuff we're using. So the original here was using 30 megabytes of, on disk size and 
42 megabytes in memory. So 30 and 42. The new one, the optimized hopefully one, is using 20, so we've saved 20 megabytes on disk. And 1.9 megabytes of memory. So we've gone from, was it 42 megabytes of memory? I can't, I can't remember. You can't keep both them up, both these windows open at the same time, unfortunately. When you click between them, it closes it down. Yeah, the original was using 42 megabytes of memory. And the new one is using 1.7 megabytes. So we're saving 40 megabytes in memory and about 20 megabytes size on disk. Not to mention reducing draw calls from from uh, from 26 down to six. All win, 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 win. So this is so the the asset merge tool. Even though I, I bitched about it a little bit, I said there is that option in there that's that's buggy and, and will crash it. So don't use it. It won't crash it, but won't won't do won't, it won't work properly. Uh, so even even though it seems a little buggy, and um, even though it doesn't work for every asset, like the books we had to do manually in Max, for assets like this, it works really well. So it's just sort of a question of going on an asset by asset basis. Use the, use the tool because it's quick and easy. If you don't get the results you want, then you don't have to use the asset. You can do it manually in your 3D program. That's the best way to work, I think. So number one, use try to use the tool to see if the tool is going to give you a good result. Because, you know, five out of ten times it probably will. Um, but if it doesn't, then you can take the asset manually into your 3D program and do it that way. Or you can use the blueprint that um, Sniper Echo has mentioned the render to texture blueprint that's in Unreal, or you can use the plugin that uh, Sniper is, uh, Sniper, that's Smurf, Sniper, yes, that Sniper has mentioned uh, in the UE4 Marketplace as well, if you want. But I like the asset tool, because when it works, it works well. Okay. Uh, now we can remove these huge, huge, huge things. Let's jump back inside the building and let's ooh, empty build an empty bedroom there. Uh, and let's swap this one out for the optimized version now. So I select you and select the optimized mesh and I'm just going to replace the asset. And there we go. Let us do a quick save. Uh, just after I move things around. So I'm going to move you into there. And I'm going to move you into there. And I'm going to do a save. Uh, Sniper Girl says, would you model a neon sign or would you simply use an alpha? Uh, it would depend on how close you want to do a render of it for, like, I, I'd probably model it. Because you, then you can get some really interesting rendering effects going on a model as opposed to uh, an alpha. If you're trying to say polys, then an alpha, of course, but I, I'd probably model it, personally. Um, Smepper says, it took like two weeks to fully process all of the individual trees and, and other objects I was taking pictures of. What are you guys talking about? You haven't posted anything I've missed, I don't think, have you, Smurf? Um, Android Lust says, I felt dumb, I needed a reference and went to Google and it hit me, no internet. <laughs> No, it's I know. You know, I, I, when, when it went down for me, I thought, oh, I'm bored. What will I do? I'll just jump and watch something on YouTube. And no, no YouTube. I had to pull out my phone. Uh, Sniper Girl says, I can relate to that. <laughs> just did that before myself. Sniper says, I photogrammed. Photogrammetry is... Hang on a little bit. 
I photogrammed, photogrammed is a word now, according to Smurfery, deal with it. Something like 30 assets. Uh, Android Lost says, I managed to catch like one minute of the stream yesterday on my PC before the internet went out again. Yeah, I was wondering where you were yesterday. Uh, it was buffering like crazy, but it was a good one minute. <laughs> uh, remember to, um, on the mobile at least, if you want to, you can you can turn on audio only. So if you really, if your internet's really cr- really crappy, uh, and you don't mind just listening to me talk on on the mobile app, you can turn on audio mode only, so you don't get the video, but you get the audio. So <laughs> it's always an option if it's really bad, I guess. But you miss half the fun without the video. You miss all those full slaps that uh, that the mods give me and I give them. Uh, Android Lust says, I would model the neon sign. It, well, yeah, I, I agree with Android Lust. I'd model it as well. Sniper Girl says, probably pretty close. Okay, we'll model it. Come up with a neon sign. Oh. Uh, Cookie says, neon signs are too fun to model. How can you not? I agree. Sniper Girl says to Android Lust, thanks. Uh, Android Lust says, makes me want to model a neon sign. Well, there you go. You've got everybody going off now, um, Sniper Girl. They all want to do a model of a neon sign. So did you post in the gallery though? Um, I'm just curious about this thing that Smurfberry is talking about. It's 30 assets you were talking about. Did I miss it? I'm looking through Discord, I don't see it. Anyway. <laughs> Smurfer says, no, he was com- complimenting my photogrammetry for, oh, from last week or so. Okay. <sighs> I feel relieved now. I thought to myself, don't tell me I've missed something that one of you guys has po- have posted in the Discord. Because that's not good. Because I like to look at everything you guys post. Good. Okay. Um, so, yes, we've done the, the harp and the harp looks identical, but we're using one texture map now. So we save draw calls, we save memory, we save disk space, all the good things in life. For a game anyway. Let's just do a quick save all here. I already did one, obviously. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do some lotting. I don't... There are a couple of other assets I would like to optimise, like the chairs, like I said. But the automated tool does not do the chairs well. I'd have to do this by hand in Max. Um, with five, it's I would like to do it, but not before I get the build sent out. So I'll do that after I do the build because I don't want any problems with the build. I want to get the build done. I'm always anxious when I do a build that I've got to send out, so I don't want to add to my nerves by tackling things that can can wait till after build. So, but I do want to do some lotting. So let's look at that. Um, let's start with, let's start with these, I think. So the, the base here to begin with, I'm going to jump into where that is, which is just here. It's actually one that I did do an optimize on. I reduced it from five or six different shaders to one using the asset tool. Um, but we want to look at the lotting. So... 64 on the light map resolution should be okay. So at the moment, it's only got one lot level. Uh, so let's 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 have a look at this. Sniper girl says to Smurfer, "You're doing amazing work with photogrammetry." Yes, he is. And you, you've done some nice work as well, Sniper Girl, with photogrammetry. Uh, Sniper Girl says to Smurfery, I believe I said the last stream too. Smurfery says, I'm hoping for a new release of Mesh Room soon. They said that they said they'll be at Sigraph next week. And there's only one last pull request on their GitHub. Perfect time for a release of a new build. Mesh, is Mesh Room the open source one? Or am I getting confused? So many different 3D photogrammetry software. Uh, Smokery says new build will have some new features such as exposure correction for photos with texturing step of the pipeline. 
and a fix for the stupid depth map, depth map issue. Uh, yes, it's the open source one. Okay, cool. I thought it might have been. Uh, yeah, so again, guys, if you want to do photogrammetry, Mesh Room is completely open source and free. You don't have to spend a dime. Just like Blender, if you want to make uh, do 3D modeling, is completely open source and free as well. Just, I'm just, it's been a while since I've done some lotting in the engine, so I'm just, just going through the settings here, re-familiarizing myself with what's going on. I'm pretty sure we've only got one LOD level on here at the moment. Yeah, LOD zero. Smurfery says it doesn't help that Agisoft renamed theirs to Metashake. That's why I got was getting confused because I yeah Meshroom Metashake. That's what what was confusing me initially. Because yes, yeah, they did. They renamed it. I don't know why they renamed it. I don't know what was wrong with um, the original name. Uh, Android Lost says it seemed fairly easy to use when I tried it. And Smokeberry says, I considered trying to download the source and build it myself, but it has dependencies that confuse me. <laughs> and the dependencies have dependencies too. That's, yeah, you can do, uh, with the Unreal Engine, you can compile your own version of that too, if you really, really want to. I tend to try and stay clear of, um, of doing recompiles, if I can. Manual compiles, I'd like to just download the thing uh, myself. Much easier, much easier than compiling it by hand. Uh, Smokeberry says, and I probably balked up, I balked up my Linux uh, VM because uh, PIP always yells at me about in, in my version and directories and writing permissions or something. <laughs> uh, no, again, I'm just, just bear with me here because I have it's been a while since I've done lotting here in the engine. Log zero, log one. Log 
So, Lord Zero, we're doing no reduction on. And Lord One. It's doing it automatically does a 50% reduction. So let me just zoom out here and see if we can see the lotting. And how far we've got to go before it lods or if it lods. Okay, that's quite close. So that's the original layer. And when we get to here is when it lods out to, to half of the polys again. Which is fine. I want to I want to keep the the um, the radius of the lotting on the interior furniture really compact because I want it to lot out really quickly because it's, it's in a confined space inside the building. We don't need a really large lot value before it starts lotting out. It must do it quickly. So. Android Lust says, I'm making a retro game character. I'll post it eventually. Hopefully you will know when it came, where it, where it came from. You do that. I, you, I love to see the stuff you guys make and particularly you Android Lust. Smurfberry says, I bet it's Dig Dug. Android Lust says, I should say a remake of a retro character. It's not Dig, dig Dug. Uh, Cookie says, loading, loading, loadification, load squared. <laughs> it's an early 90s character, Android Lust says. Uh, so yes, we're, we're getting um, a quick lot happening here. So that's original, that's lod, that's original, that's lod. But I want to see if I can push this down a bit more. So at 50%, let's see if we can take it to 20. Okay, so... Oh, hang on, what have I done here? It's um... It just it made a change to my distance before it starts lotting. I'm just looking at that. Lot 1. Lot 0. Uh, Sniper Girl says, yes, definitely Dig Dug. Has to be. No other retro character exists. Android Lust says, I might spoil it before. No, don't tell us. You show us. Sniper Girl says, honestly, I've been thinking of modeling uh, the original Doom guy. I think it would be fun as hell to do. The original Doom guy, hey? Lord Zero, Lord One. Reduction settings. So that's full LOD 0 and it hits LOD 1 here. Um, I'm just trying to work out if that's too far away or not. If I want it to LOD out more quickly than that. Cookie says rim shot. Uh, Drew Loss says uh, I was about to take the spoiler screenshot and post it. Sniper Girl says yeah, the one from the main cover. <laughs> that certainly is a long ass link. Yeah, the screen size before it starts to load, it take you have to get out to about here. Um, do I want it to be closer before it loads out? Maybe not. I guess we don't want it to be too close. We don't want it loading out when we're too close to it. Particularly now that I've, I've taken it down to 20% of the triangles. 
might be okay. We can always come back in and we can uh, we can adjust the lotting if we think it's uh, too far away. And while I can see a small change here, not enough that people are going to notice while they're playing the game, I don't think. Uh, let's do a save here. And I'm just going to run around the level here, paying attention to what's going on with these... What are those things? Pedestals. Ped that's the word. Pedestals. Uh, they're going to be a little hard to see because they're in quite a darkly lit room, but I've got them all over the building, so... So when we get to about here, it's probably lotted out, or lotted back. I don't see any difference. Let me go back down to the front of the building, so it's, it's better lit. Uh, and I can get a better idea. Okay, there's this one here. This one's sitting right underneath the light, so... Let's sort of look at it as we go down the steps here. That noise. I don't know if you guys can hear it on stream. I was playing... I was doing some work last night and I heard that and it freaked me out. Um, but, yeah, I think... The lighting is not too bad. So fully, no lot zero. And as we get back to probably around about here, we should be back to lot one. <laughs> um. Sniper Girl says, wow, sounds like nails on chalkboard. It's actually supposed to be like that, that electrical sound. Like the door's locked, you can't open it up until you dispel the sign, the signal, the seal, the magical seal. Uh, and I've got them on all of the doors here, particularly the doors to rooms that have nothing in them for the build that I'm going to send out. Um, I wanted to make it so that Number one, to show them what some of the effects are like and to stop them from going into rooms that have nothing in them. Because that's never a good look. So all, all of the rooms here that, um, that, you, that have nothing in them are locked and they can't get into. The bathroom and kitchen, that's right. Well, the kitchen is actually behind this door here. This is where the kitchen's going to go. And the bathroom was that last sec, that other room down the, near the stairwell at the end of the stairs there. So this room is going to be the kitchen. And this room is going to be the bathroom. Uh, these two rooms, I'm not sure what we're going to put in them. They're going to have fireplaces in them, that one there and that room there. Um, bookcases, maybe that sort of thing. I haven't really decided exactly what's going to go in those rooms. And then the other room upstairs, past the central... I don't know, we're calling it the ballroom? I don't know what it is. The central room here that we've been working in. Um, will be the master bedroom. So... So this one in here will be the um, master bedroom. Again, the lighting, if you notice up there in the top left-hand corner, lighting needs to be rebuilt. So things like the plants here, they're, they're not shadowing properly because I need to rebuild the lighting. Just pointing that out for anyone that, before anyone mentions anything. <laughs> Snappy Girl says, all I can say is if I have to listen to that sound effect for super long, uh, I'll answer any question you want to know. 
I'll probably tone it down. I'll do, I'll do some sound balancing once all the other sound effects go in, once the music goes in, all that sort of thing. So it won't be super annoying now because it's just, it's the only thing you can hear and it's at full volume. But once the rest of the audio goes in, then I'll start balancing out the sound a little bit more. Uh, and and the sound volume, the sound effect itself, is, it's, it's localized to a very small area. So you've got to get really close to the door to hear it. You walk away from the door, you won't hear it. I think we might leave it there for today, guys and girls, though. I do want to thank you all very much, though, for hanging out with me and for watching. I do appreciate it. You guys and girls have a great weekend. Oh, I just wanted to quickly check out Sniper Girl's image here. I won't, I won't show them all Sniper Girl. I'll just show one. Uh, you guys, though, jump on the Discord server and check out the images Sniper Girl has posted of what she's working on. Just let me get rid of my graphic here for a minute. Yeah, it looks really cool. Lots of detailing going on. I love all the wiring and stuff that's going on here as well. Looks super awesome and super cool. It's going to look amazing. So, yes, guys, uh, I do want to thank you for being here and for watching. I'll be back on again next week on Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. You guys and girls have a great weekend and I'll see you all next week. See you guys.